So Jeremy, cheers for taking the time to no have problem. a look. talk to us. Good to so, see you again. What are we looking at? This is quite exciting, right? It is, yeah. So ProRes RAW, right? ProRes RAW um, announced a couple of days ago. I think it's going to be pretty much the big news of the show. I Pro think Res. so. It's going to change everything. It is. It is already <laughs> changing everything. It was changing everything for me um, <laughs> a lot. Uh, so, so yeah, basically, instead of packing um, using the ProRes algorithm to pack up RGB mm. pixels that have been already converted from the sensor values into a pixel. And the way that works is there's two greens and a red and a blue. Yeah, D-Bayer pattern. D-Bayer pattern. And you take that, and they're called sensor values. So instead of taking those sensor values inside the camera and, and, and converting them into a video pixel, an RGB video pixel, ProRes RAW takes those sensor values and packages then them up into, yeah. which is quite clever. Yeah. Um, and we are the enabler of that because we record right now, or we receive raw signals from around eight cameras. And from Panasonic, EVA1, Vericam LT, FS700, FS5, FS7, FS7 Mark II, C300 Mark II from Canon and the C500 are all supported day one. Yep. All the Shogun and Inferno customers get this for free. It works the same as ProRes yep. inside our units. It works the same as ProRes inside yep. Final Cut and you can finish with it and go to formats like either ProRes for delivery or H.265 and 4. And the Sumo gets it as well, right? Sumo gets it as well. Yeah. So all of those customers, I think there's 50,000 of them out there, yeah. um, get upgraded day one. Yeah, amazing. I mean, I think ProRes is good. That ProRes RAW is really going to be taking off. Yeah. I mean, that, that we're going to start seeing it inside cameras. We're going to start seeing it in your yep. things. Yep. I think it really is going to become sort of an industry standard. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, um, you know, that's what we are about, industry standards. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a standard, we'll support it. Yeah. You know, we HDMI, SDI, quad link, blah, blah, blah. If there's enough things out there doing it, we'll support it. And codecs, there haven't been big inventions in codecs. We've gone up to 4K and et cetera, but this is a really big step for the industry and we're very happy to be at the forefront of it. Yeah, absolutely, it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. But of course, what's new for you? Because that's, that's, that's Apple's big thing, which you're supporting. Yes. This, this is your big thing. It is. So this is the Ninja 5. It's mm. uh, the culmination of many, many years of and now getting back to our core market, able to have the processor inside that's of a low enough power consumption mm. that we can do this. Um, it is a really slim unit. I call it one inch, one inch thin, which is really, really <laughs> small like this. And, and it's uh, 320 grams or 11 ounces. So it's tiny. It's tiny and we've, we've packed everything that Inferno does. It's a thousand nit monitor, so you've got 10 stops of dynamic range for HDR yeah. monitoring. You've got a, a recording system that is capable of going up to ProRes RAW. This one isn't licensed for ProRes RAW yet, so okay. I'm not officially announcing that. I'm just saying it's capable of it in the future. Yep, so there's no processor sort of limitations. No, there's no limitation there. Um, the only limitation, I guess, is the HDMI only sockets. Correct. And there so, aren't any so, raw output. And there's no out raw output. So anyone with an HDMI camera, like the GH5, <laughs> I'd be banging on Panasonic's door, banging on Canon's door and Sony's door to say, give me raw out of HDMI. And I promise you, if you can do that, I will support it. And I'm, I'm talking to the same guys. So we'll all start shouting. Yeah, let's start shouting loud. You saw it here. Hashtag give me raw. But I mean, talking of shouting, this is something people have been asking for for a long time. It's sort of mm. a small 4K um, five inch monitor from you guys. Yeah, exactly. The original Ninja Blades were such a lovely little size. Yeah, yeah. And we, we just couldn't get there with the processing and give 4K. So we decided not yeah. to compromise on that. Um, That's fair enough. You know, there's five inches out there, but they're HD recording. Oh, today, you know, I'm not compelled by it. Whether yeah. it's 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, I don't care. Everyone wants 4K. Everyone wants 4K. So the next thing, and we also can do our small batteries again. The last yeah, thing, Sony MPs. Sony yeah. MPs, yeah. And there's a little expansion slot that we can do a lot now, with. Now this in is the really future. interesting. So let's talk through this a little bit. Yeah. So this is, un this is, power, audio, and video at super high speeds. Okay. It does everything the unit can do internally. It's like a direct connection into the chip. And, and at the moment, this doesn't do pretty much anything. But you're you're seeing for the future. There's yeah, I want to open it up to for ourselves to do modules to yeah, add on, yeah. as well as for third parties to make like, let's say, wireless okay, so transmitter. Third parties as well. Take the video and transmit it. Yeah. So, because we have more ideas and customers have more ideas than we can keep up with. Mm. So why not open the ecosystem to let them, yeah. it's like kind of, I guess, a hardware app store. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, let's have people who are focused on their thing mm. 
make product that fits on ours and they can Absolutely. receive power and we can piggyback and put batteries on the back of it like we do with our Connect series. So we've got a patent yep. on that kind of modularity. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully that will entice people to, to make it. So yep. the, I'm announcing that at the show in the Atom X range of accessories, mm. of which there is another one, which is the yeah, the media. SSD Mini. So, so this, this is, is smaller. This is smaller. We call this Atom X SSD Mini. Mm. And the SSD Mini is a cut down actual version of the size of the the electronics that are inside SSDs today <laughs> without the wasted space. Look how thin that is. And when I it's put tiny. it on the end of mine, it looks awesome, right? Absolutely. But yeah, the I mean, beauty of this, let me hold, yep. how nice is that? Looks like a, a mini disc. <laughs> Remember MD? <laughs> yeah, vaguely. <laughs> Oh, you don't. It looks like a floppy disk. <laughs> it looks like a floppy yeah, disk. Yeah, vaguely remember them too. Yeah. <laughs> it's backwards compatible with our other drives. That's cool. So, so you can put bigger ones Yeah, on you there. can take anything from a Shogun from five, four years ago and, and use yeah. it. But really, I think... And this one is also forward compatible because we've got a little handle that pops out here and you can... So if you invest in, in these, you, you, you can want put them a 7-inch monitor. Yeah, you can put it in your Shogun. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. 695. Yeah. I mean, that is an amazingly low price because this... It, other than the SDI ports, it's effectively everything the, the Inferno does. I want right? the most number of people to pick this up. Yeah. The, if we put 100 bucks on top, people might think about it. I call yeah. it the got to ask your partner policy. <laughs> if you're in a store and it's 695 and you just spend three grand on a camera, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that hit at home or in the business room for mm. my production company and say, I made the call because it's kick ass. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want you guys to do. 695 US, no one should not be having the Ninja 5. I mean, that is, gonna, that is a remarkable price for you. With Raw, if you guys lobby hard enough. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it's going to be really popular. Thank you so much. No problem. Cheers, man.